What's going on, everybody? Welcome to How To Tuesday. I've got my friend Brandon Simmons, Captain Brandon Simmons. He runs the End of the Blue Boat at Hawks K Resort. He's recently had some great success with sailfish. In fact, he set the record. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And um, we are also going to talk about things that they were doing on that day to have such good success and how that might translate into what we can do on just a regular day and just take advantage of more opportunities. Brandon, what's going on, buddy? Rare day off, huh? Rare day off at a last minute cancellation. So I get to hang out with the family. Right on. Good for you. Good for you. Well, congratulations no doubt, no to doubt. you and the crew for um, the record number of sailfish. Tell, tell me about that real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was honestly incredible. Um, I've seen a lot of tailing conditions and, and it's normally really good when you get that current running into the wind. Um, a real strong east wind is, is what you're looking for and that current's running up into it. <clears throat> which will pop those fish up on the surface. They're saving energy while they're migrating down the coast and they'll actually surf the waves down. That's, that's what we're looking for. So you'll get out there, you know, anywhere from almost 80 foot to really 200 foot. It depends on where that current's running, where the Gulf stream is. Um, you get out there and you get a few good fishermen. Like we had, we had a good buddy, Sam Malazzo, Lee Hagen and Ben Zidane on the boats, really good fishermen around the keys here. And, um, you know, we got out there. We expected to catch fish. We had 300 sabiki pilchards, big old pilchards the size of my hand. So we had the right bait. We had the right crew, and we just needed the right conditions, and it all lined up. Um, it was really incredible. I think in the first, I think in the first hour, maybe 30 minutes, we caught eight fish right off the bat before we even got into the blue clean water. They were in the nasty water, just swimming down sea. Um, it was really, it was really an incredible experience. Um, we were busy all day, obviously, to catch 76. There, there wasn't really a, a time there. It slowed down for us. I mean, 76 sailfish. That Those are those are numbers that you hear from Guatemala. That's really incredible. And um, how do we know that that is the record for the Keys? Is, is it an unofficial record? Um, I think it is. It's more of an unofficial record. Um, as far as Florida goes, I think the, the record was 84, and that was – caught back in the eighties, which is another unofficial record. Um, but basically, you know, it's, it's definitely a competition between a lot of the keys guys. Cause you know, whenever we get the condition, everyone wants to catch the most fish for the bragging rights. And, um, it's, it's more of an unofficial record. We have almost every release on video for our, our day. So that was pretty cool. Um, so we, we pretty much got proof that we really did it. There was another boat out there called Skipjack. They were, uh, they were right next to us. I think they ended up catching 64. Wow. So there was, there was a few other boats out there putting up big numbers. The week before, the main attraction had caught 70, and they broke the previous record. And it was just, I mean, it was an incredible two weeks of fishing when those sailfish were coming through this year. It seems to be getting better and better each year. You know, the every year there's less and less people killing these fish. It's more of a, you know, a released fish. You don't have a lot of tournaments for sailfish where, you know, you're coming in and weighing sailfish. It's more of a numbers uh, tournament than it is with the Marlin where they've got those high weights and, and stuff they're looking for. Right. But it was, it was incredible. Right. Well, that's awesome, man. <laughs> so what I think that we can talk about here on, on this particular show that will give people some great take-home value is obviously it's a record for a reason that's the most ever caught and that's something that uh, doesn't happen that often but you do have days where either you only see a couple and you want to take advantage of of those and actually turn those into caught fish or days where the fishing is really good and instead of catching 10 maybe you could catch 14 if if you had your 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 equipment prepared and maybe you could help us to kind of understand on an extreme level it worked for you to catch 76 for you and your crew to catch 76 uh what kind of things are you doing that might be different than just the recreational angler that's going out there and 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 hoping for a sailfish um so we pretty much um use big spinners it's all casting you know it's all sight fishing for these fish uh, mostly we, you know, rig them up with the main line, a, a 20 pound, um, mono mono for the main line. That's a little easier to cast and, and everything like that. And we'll use a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, um, at least 15 foot. That's the legal IGFA leader for a released fish <clears throat> and a real small circle hook, you know, about a six O or a seven O 
And basically when you see these fish, you don't want to roar right up on them. You, you kind of want to, you know, watch where they're going. They're going to be tailing down the waves and, and really what worked out best for us um, real early in the morning, we were kind of pitching into the waves where the sailfish were swimming down on us. And it just seemed like by the time they got to us, they would sink out a little more. So we started switching up our game plan and coming basically from the side and almost behind them, giving a good downwind cast out in front of them. That way they never really saw the boat, never saw us. And almost every one of those casts seemed to work out really good for us. You let them eat it, you know, you let them eat the bait. You, your captain will let you know if he's hooked or not. If you can still see silver hanging out of his mouth, you want to wait till it disappears. Um, and once you got them on, you pretty much got them on there. So what you're saying is you're going the same direction as the fish and kind of throwing out in front of them and they're never seeing the boat like that? Is that is that what you just said? Yeah, okay. basically. So we're pretty much driving into the waves or, or you know, when you're working a zone, um, you kind of – so what, what worked well for us is we were running down to the west where the bite has been, and it just kind of seemed like it was Peter and out. We stopped seeing fish, and we came back up to the east where we were running into the waves. So it's a little easier to see them coming at you that way. Um, you can see them from a little further further off. But um, basically when you do see them, just you don't want them to see the boat you don't because they'll sink out, and then you right. won't find them anymore. A lot of the fish we found were on the powder side of the edge. And when I say the edge, you know, once you get out there in that current, you get that green water that's in the shallows. And once you get over the reef, it kind of turns a little powdery and then it'll hit a hard, clear purple blue right on the outside of it. And when I say hard, I mean, it's like a line. You could paint it right mm -hmm. there. And those fish work pretty much on right on either side of that um, pushing bay. You'll see Bonitas coming down. I think we saw a, a few packs of blue fins that day as well. There's, there's all kinds of stuff migrating when that, when that uh, condition happens. So. You just want to make sure you give them some space and, uh, you know, give, give yourself time and a good downwind cast, you know, downwind, you're obviously going to be able to throw it further. So if they get a little further away from you, that's okay. Just make sure you get it out in front of them and lead them a little bit. Okay. And talk, talk a little bit about the, the hook set and how you're doing that. You talked about how making sure that they're eating the bait and, and listening to the captain and, but you're using a very small circle hook and you're using very light, uh, fluorocarbon, or it seems like to me, 30 pound fluorocarbon. That seems that seems pretty light. Is there a way that you guys were um, in order to, to land 76, you probably didn't miss that many. So what's no. what's the uh, what would you how would you instruct a client to set the hook on a sailfish in those conditions? Um, so we throw your bait out there and a lot of times you'll see them. They'll fire up, throw their sail up and get around it. And once they pile on it, you know, you want to open your bail, point your rod at them, let them eat it about seven seconds or so, you know, once you close your bail, don't try to wind tight and, and come back on them hard. Just wind nice and easy and keep your rod tip kind of low. And that fish will hook himself every single time. Keep the rod um, tip low. low. Yeah. Rod tip low and, and low and, and pressure back. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, you know, you're keeping a tarpon from, from coming up and gulping right. air. You, you just want to keep that hook. So it comes down and, and into the right side of the corner of the mouth. Um, and after that, Basically, what we were doing to make sure we got every single fish is we got on the fish as fast as possible. So as soon as the fish was hooked, you know, the captain's running the boat over there as quick as possible. And, and the mates are grabbing the leader and, and we're going to pop them off and look for the next one. A certified catch is grabbing the leader. You don't boat sail fish really anymore. So you grab your leader. You can play with them a little bit and pop them off. Um, and that's pretty much how we did it all day. We had a lot of we had a lot of doubles. We had a few triples. And I think at one point we had four or five fish hooked up, but we only caught like one out of those. It was just kind of, those went crazy. They were all over the place. And it's pretty incredible once it happens, you know, it's, it's a, it's an awesome fish. My favorite fish to catch. That's for sure. That's cool. So what about the, uh, what about the actual rigs that you're using? Like what, what, what rods do you like? What rod actions do you like for, for this? And, um, are all, you know, when you get out on a boat like, like that, did you just have all identical tackle or are there any reason to have different, different actions of rods or length of rods? We honestly had all different rods. <laughs> um, we had, we had a lot of, uh, bigger rods obviously with mono. And then, um, we had, uh, the guy Scott Martin with the Scott Martin challenge was yep. with us that day. It was his Freeman that we were out on. And he, he's a big bass fisherman, big tournament guy. And he had a lot of his bass rods. And I think we probably hooked about 15 sailfish on a tiny little, like small spinner with braid. I mean, we were hooking them every, every which way they were just, you know, they're eating, they were there. The fish were there. The hardest part is finding the fish. In my opinion, once they're there, you can 
you have the right bait and the right stuff, they're going to eat. Right on. Um, and so as far as finding them on those conditions, so it, it, that happens a certain time of the year? Uh, yes. So basically after winter, February, March time is, is when that current moves in real close to the keys, which creates that condition. And when it, when I say, I say it moves in real close, it's really running, it's really running to the east, but for all of you folks who kind of get confused down here in the Keys, it's running up to the north. It's running along the coast of Florida and going up towards Georgia, basically. And all the fish are coming down, you know, tailing down basically to get around the point of Florida and get into the Gulf Stream. A lot of people think they, uh, they go out there and they spawn and then they turn around and right about now, you know, we've been seeing a lot of marlin and a lot of stuff offshore. And that's Basically, what people think is they come back around and come come out offshore and, and move back up and then just do the big circle all over again. Very cool. Um, and so that uh, what about um, the the number of rods that you that you have ready? You said Scott Martin brought all of his or a lot of his tackle on a regular day um, for somebody that wants to take advantage of a good fishing condition like that. Talk about the um, the preparation. How many rigs you might have ready um, for a day where you expect the fishing might be good, or you're going to try to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Yeah. So if you're just going out there and you know you want to give it a shot and catch your fish, I would recommend to have at least six rods ready at all times, just because you know you're not always going to hook six fish, but there's times where you just don't have time to retie those other rods, and it's just so much easier for you to grab one that's you know, basically your backup rod, but it's the same as the other ones. That way you're always prepared in any condition that happens because it, it can happen fast. You yeah. know, you might not be seeing anything for three hours and then all of a sudden something happens and the fish raise up and, and you see them for the next hour and a half. And that's just kind of how, kind of how it happens. They go through lulls, whatever it may be, they, they, they sink out for a while and then, and then you'll notice there'll be, you know, a 45 minute period where it's like, wow, it just seems like everything came alive. Like there's bonitas going by, you you know, so you want to be ready. You want to have about six, six good big spinners rigged, you know, with your 30 to 40 pound on it and just ready for anything that's going to happen. Very cool. And then when you do encounter something, say you got into a school bonito or you got, uh, you had something wonderful happen. Like you said, you had four or five fish on at the same time, you end up only landing one. That means that you have five rods. Now they're out of commission. Um, exactly. so what's, what's the strategy there? Do you have like somebody, as soon as a rod goes out of commission, if someone doesn't have a rod in their hand, are they tying up or is the mate tying up or what's the strategy on getting back, getting everything back up to speed? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, if, if you've got nothing going on, then <laughs> figure something out and do something because everybody needs to be working. As long as you're all working like a well-oiled machine, everything will be smooth. You won't have any problems, but obviously there's other people that are keyed in on, you know, doing something else as far as baiting the hooks and stuff like that, you know, and if you can tie a hook, then you see a rod that there's nothing tied on. Obviously you don't just, don't just leave it there. If you've got nothing going on, tie it up. That way everyone's ready to go. But like, you know, like I said, you get into those chaos moments where you're kind of spun up and you're not really sure where to go or what to do. Um, but you just, you know, you got to try to stay focused and, and keep everything prepared. You know, preparation is, is very important. Yeah. It seems like that would be, um, that, that, it, it, when you're talking about records and, and, and maximizing all of the opportunities, it seems like preparation and, and just having a, a bunch of rods that are ready because when you lose five, you know, in, in 15 minutes, then all of a sudden, yeah, it's quick. you know, and, and the fishing is fantastic. You've got to get back on it. And, uh, I can only imagine what the inside of that boat looked like at the end of the day. Let's talk about the rig that you like to use. You say you're using a 15 foot leader. So that means you're having to cast that leader. What about the connection between the braid and the, and the fluorocarbon? What, what knot do you like there? So a lot of people will tie their bimini and then, and do that. I personally, um, don't do that. I'll either do a small unity uni or a little Albright straight to the line itself. That way I only have one knot because I'm not really looking for, you know, the pressure. Obviously we're using really light tackle on really big fish. You're basically trying to get on top of these fish just to get your leader. So you're not really trying to horse them in. 
obviously if you're trying to land the fish and, you know, keep them by the boat and get a good picture and stuff like that, you use a little bit more, a little more pressure, but for us, it's strictly casting. You don't want any knots getting in the way. You don't want any issues with any of that. You know, as long as you're get a tie knots, one little knot's going to be enough. You're not going to put a lot of pressure on these fish, just enough to keep them tight and, and to where you can run up on them. Your mate grabs a leader and he pops them off. Mm-hmm. And that uni to uni, uh, from the, from the braid to the floor carbon, that never, you're not having any problem with that casting. Not having any I problems. would think, I would think a lot of people would might go for the, the FG knot or something like that. The FG knot would be great if you're using braid. I, I strictly use mono to, to fluoro. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just one little knot. And uh, honestly, I can't think of, so when you tie your bimini and you do, you, is it an all bright straight to the bimini? Yeah, that you, you can do that. Or like leader? Scott, Scott ties that, um, Aussie quickie, he calls it, yeah, which yeah, uh, is, is also too. called another, uh, I can't remember what else it's called, but it, it's, uh, kind of like a, kind of like a, a, a clinch knot in the bimini loop. It's a, it's a very sweet, uh, looking knot. And obviously Scott Walker, Thanks very highly of it. I mean, you get on his boat and every single rod and the whole boat is tied exactly I identically. I think the that's same. the same. I think that's the same knot I use. Yeah. Just straight line to line, real quick. You basically bend it over, go through and around, and, and it, it pulls tight really quick. Yeah. And that's, it's really it's a strong knot. It sounds like a Albright, um, which is which is fantastic. I, I guess it doesn't really matter what you choose as long as you got confidence in it. And and a lot of people will argue to the nail that the FG knot is what you should use in that case, but I always think, well, man, if you, if you knock, you know, five rods out of commission real quick, are you really going to tie five FG knots? I mean, it is a very, very, very strong knot, but it does. It just takes take a, a while. It takes it's a while. Only and some people are fast with it. Some people, if you're fast with it, good for you, man. But, but you got to have something that you can tie very, very quickly. That's going to be low profile and strong. So for that's you, it. that's it's all about the low profile. Yeah. Yep. Going through the guides with ease. Very cool. And then, uh, as far as uh, um, recreational anglers just kind of pulling up on that sailfish and they want to kind of move on, as far as popping that thing off, you have any tips for for getting up there and and you know you're only dealing with thirty pound fluorocarbon um, as far and you probably had plenty of practice with this on the day where you're catching seventy six. Uh, how are you how are you getting that hook? out or breaking it off or moving on as quickly as you possibly can. So basically we'll just take a quick wrap and pop them off. Um, I would recommend, you know, I normally don't use gloves. We just don't have time. I'll pull my sleeve over my hand or I'll just use my hand. But obviously once your hands get wet, they're a little softer and that 30 pound is really small and streamlined and it, it will cut your hands. So just throw a glove on real quick or something, you know, that you can get a little bit more pressure with and, just get up on him and, and basically wrap that line around your hand and you can just hold him and you really don't even have to pull on him. He'll, it's going to happen so quick. He'll, he'll pop it right off with that 30 pound. Right. Okay. And then, uh, let's talk about the bait just for a minute. If you were to, uh, get ready for a, for a trip like that, you got somebody, maybe they're not trying to set the record, but they would just like to go out there and catch some, what would you, um, kind of suggest as far as the baits go? I would recommend we were using pilchards that day. Um, that is my favorite bait to use a big old, you know, whopper pilchard razor belly. Um, you can speak him on the reef or if you know a spot to catch him, or if a lot of guys will sell them. If you've got some people around town to buy them, uh, you can go out and catch ballyhoos. They're, they're hunting ballyhoos or hunting pilchards. Basically any of those, those bait fish they're looking for goggle eyes, anything like that. The pilchard is is my recommended bait just because they kind of stay on the surface a little better and they swim a little harder. So they give them a little bit more to chase, which, you know, you think it's like, oh, it's harder for them to get. Well, no, that that's what you want. You want that fish to be, have a little bit of a challenge. If it's too easy, most of the time they'll just be like, oh, I don't want that. Right. So if you've got something that's paddling really hard away from it, fires those fish up like a pilchard. So that was the the key bait for us. That's and we awesome. were honestly, we, we, we belly hooked a lot of our fish so you can cast them a lot further. And they, when they swim, they swim away. You can't really see the hook as much. And, and we got a lot better hook sets that way I think, as well. Really? That's cool. That's a good tip right there. Out of yep. all, out of all of it, maybe that's the best thing you, you just kind of slipped in there at the end. Well, all right. Belly hook, belly hook, pilchard, belly hook filtered. All right. Well, man, <laughs> again, thanks uh, for, for doing this and congratulations to you and the crew. Um, actually, you can go and see that video 
if you want, on somebody's YouTube channel. Is it on uh, Scott Martin's? I think it's on Scott Martin's YouTube channel. Yeah, I think so. Right on. So that what we're talking about the day where they they caught seventy six is on Scott Martin's uh, YouTube channel. He is a, a very popular YouTuber. It's very easy to find. Just Google or get on YouTube. Look up Scott Martin, Scott Martin Challenge, and I think the video is called Seventy Six Sailfish in a Day or something like that. It's pretty easy to find. Uh, but you can see Brandon in action there. And if you want to fish with Brandon, what would you do? I would call Hawks K Resort and recommend me. Or what was the number you got for oh, me? Oh yeah, there? man, that's a one eight hundred fish three zero five. That's the number F I S H three zero five. Yep. Yep. That's yeah. uh, or or look me up on Instagram, Captain Brando, and you can direct message me, and I'll get you hooked up and get out there and catch some fish. All right, great. Well, thanks, Brandon. And if you guys have any uh, any questions about this, uh, fire fire the questions my way. I'll ask Brandon. We'll get him on the show again and uh, and get some more of his knowledge. All right, well, that's it for this week. We will talk to you next week on How to Tuesday. See you.